And welcome to another episode of the Woods Water Mizzou Podcast. I'm on regular host. Skeeter along with me tonight, as usual, is Case. Case, how you doing, brother? Good. Uh, Cole is unable to make it. Um, he came on the very tail end of our recap. But we we're hoping to get him on this week to talk about his, his deer killing story from last week. So that'll, that'll have to wait. Maybe, maybe he's waiting for you and I to have a story to tell too so we all have a a something killing story yeah we need but, some we need some uh some outdoor content i really need them to come through for us yeah well i mean he's he's building the content it's just you gotta get him on and give the content him on get yeah, him on. It doesn't, God doesn't count for not using it yeah I, I guess he's does he still have the co-host status or is he most frequent guest again. <laughs> he might be, yeah. <laughs> Let's go and talk about our presenting sponsor. I almost clicked the wrong video. Here we go. Thanks to our presenting sponsor, Murphy Kinney Sumi Trial Lawyers, the trusted personal injury lawyers of the Woods Water Mizzou podcast. MKS is the name to think of when legal representation is needed for a personal injury anywhere in the state of Missouri. Call them at 816 281 5470 or visit murphykinneysumi.com today. Murphy Kinney Sumi. Authentic. Driven. Results. All right. Appreciate MKS for all that they do for us. You're number 21. Number 21, Missouri Tigers. Travel to Amherst, Massachusetts to take on the unranked 1-5 UMass Minutemen. Um, 11 o'clock cool kickoff. Time. Yeah. 11 o'clock kickoff, according to ESPN, as the time of re- recording this, Mizzou opened as a 27.5 point favorite, over under 53.5. ESPN matchup predictor, Missouri 95.3, UMass 4.7. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, uh, man, this is an interesting game because given what happened last week, it is it's almost like a, a no besides you're going to win the game, but like public opinion of Mizzou, not a ton of positive you can get out of this, but you could go backwards. You could make things worse. And there's that. We We haven't really harped on the rankings at all this year, you know, even when. Maybe we didn't agree with the dropping after beating Vanderbilt or beating Boston College, and we drop a spot. Like, but think about this. Obviously, this week we're not arguing. I would have been fine how we fell out of the top twenty-five. We we dropped to twenty-one. That's fine for the body of work that's out there. That's fine. That's more about what we can do than what we have done. Uh, that ranking. But we fell further for beating Vanderbilt in double overtime than what Alabama fell for losing to Vanderbilt. It, that's pretty funny, right? If Imagine. we want to talk about the national media and their opinion of this Missouri Tiger team, that right there sums it up. Yeah, that's that's how that's how highly I think of your Missouri Tigers. It uh, it hurt us to we got hurt more by beating Vandy than it is to lose to Vandy if you're Bama. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it, it sucks. Um, they they respect us as much as we respected Texas A&M last week. Ooh, yeah. Good way to put it. Good way to put it. There um, was none. There uh, was none. And like even then, and, I'll say 21, like you said, is a good spot to be. But it is it's funny when you look at like everyone else and what happened to them and why they fell. Yeah. Uh, Man, I was really hoping to get a UMass pod on, had one lined up, and then the guy ended up getting busy with work, and he's not even podcasting right now as of about three weeks ago. So um, outside of Amherst, I think, was that podcast, and somebody else has taken over it, and they just don't communicate like he was. So 
uh if you want to go check it out that's the only podcast i could find for umass but i really man i'm a butcher this <laughs> i'm gonna butcher this the umass quarterback statistically having a better year than brady cook now this is what i'm gonna butcher his last name i'm gonna spell it for you because it's spelled out for me P H O M M A C H A N H. But he's um, 104 of 181 on 1,280 yards on the year, seven touchdowns, three interceptions. So he's turned the ball over more than Brady, but he's thrown more touchdowns and more yards. He's also their leading rusher. Oh, great. A rushing yeah. quarterback. That's, that's great for Corey Batoon to really scheme up a new game plan that's what he likes to talk about that's what he likes yeah. to scheme for those yeah yeah i'm surprised their quarterback's not their leading receiver too but uh keeney james is the leading receiver 24 receptions 493 yards three touchdowns umass on our last five games they hung in tight with northern illinois last week but ended up losing 34 to 20 week before Lost 23-20 to 20 at in overtime against Miami of Ohio. Then CCSU, they beat 35-31, the powerhouse CCSU. You know that school, don't you, Case? I don't. I'm looking at it as well. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a Duke logo knockoff. Uh, well, I do. <laughs> I say we just honor our friends over at Mazogcast and possible Bearcats, CCSU <laughs> possible Bearcats. Uh, UMass Minutemen beat them 35-31. And then they lost to Buffalo 34-3 to and Toledo 38-23. So UMass is terrible. There is nothing positive that we will learn from this game for going forward other than our team decided to get on a bus, go see Cole at work, jump on a plane, fly to wherever they got to fly to in UMass. I would imagine Boston you gotta probably. Fly to Logan. And <laughs> Logan. Okay. And then drive however far to Amherst there and show up and play the game at 11 o'clock Saturday. That's that's about the only positive I'm going to yeah, get out of hey, that. You think... This is a stupid, stupid thing to say. Do you think we would have think we would have better in AM if we'd played like this game before? We got at least one road game under our belt. Am I or am I giving too much credit to like like I don't know. I don't know. Oh boy, I feel bad for our listeners because I I'm just like in a bucket of like I don't even of despair. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. And it's we're in such a weird position being Mizzou fans, being fans of an SEC team like this, because like I am almost a hundred percent sure Mizzou wins this game. Like, but it doesn't matter because like the picture is so much bigger. Like, no. <laughs> I don't know. It's so silly. I don't. Mm. I don't. What do we? What do we say, Skeeter? Well, I mean, really, the only thing we have because if we beat UMass eighty-eight to nothing. Are you going to come out of that game Saturday pounding your chest? Zeus no. back. If Brady throws for 500 yards and five t- touchdowns, doesn't take a sack, and we rush for 200 yards, you going to feel better about the offense going in to face Auburn the following week? I'm not. I'm not taking – I am I am generally the biggest voice to say respect your opponent. I'm giving zero respect to UMass this week. Um, sorry to their 15,000 fans that show up and fill up their stadium every week if they have that. But, I mean, the only thing this week sets up to tell us is if anything negative is still with this team. Uh, we can learn more bad. If we don't cover the 27 and a half points, I'm probably going to come on here next week and not be happy and say negative things. Um, we absolutely can't play around with these guys. I don't even, 
care to see Drew Pine play. If Brady's well, going to be need, the guy, rhythm. if Brady's going to be the guy, drink what's put, puts out there. You know, when you're down forty-one to seven on the road at Kyle Field, and not put Drew Pine in because he, he you got to find a rhythm. Well, by golly, I want Brady Cook to play all four quarters this week too. Uh, I want Luther. I want Theo. I want all these guys that are supposed to be the leaders supposed to be the best wide receiver room in the country i want them to go out and earn it you know that, that was one thing we didn't talk about on the recap episode and i'm saying this now i know we release this on certain different days but we record them back to back luther was on the sideline for more third downs than what he was on the field i believe you know if you want to be a top 10 draft pick if you're that elite of an athlete and supposedly the best wide receiver in the country as you tell us and we want to believe you you you're a missouri tiger you're a true son you're who we want to succeed more than anybody else in the country at at your position is luther burden why are we going to the sideline on third down yeah uh bad luck and man just I, I just I, I said it last week on the last episode I'll say it again it I just I thought there'd be more leadership there'd be more accountability on the sideline I thought these guys would fight through this kind of stuff and until really until we get to Auburn we won't even know if anything's fixed and, and that's what from, a, from frustrated me looks so of it, Auburn's not even that team no but really it was frustrated me from. about. The way our season set up is we got cupcake, cupcake, good Boston College team showed me something. Good Vanderbilt team got a rotten a rock fight with them. Curb stomp by AM. I don't know if I love having all these cupcakes stacked up at the start of the season because one, we don't learn a, a damn thing. Uh, a two, I think it gives the team uh, un, like not correct expectations of a game of game flow. Um. I don't know, I've been thinking about that lately. I just maybe that was a part of like what went wrong here and poor mindset. Yeah. I want I mean this game we need to see some things. We need to see a fast start. Theo we said we started fast last week against A and M just the refs picked up the PI and called back the touchdown and so the penalties are, you know, re- reversed penalties where the only reason the points weren't on the board to show for the fast start. I'm sorry. Points on the board's what wins you games. Yeah. And, man, I can get what he was saying. That started out that, that toss of Luther was nice. I was excited. But you can't be so mentally weak where you can't go out the next drive and st- also – also go starting fast like be in it you know what i mean yeah it, it you can't fall apart because like it sucks i said i know I'm just, I'm, i feel like i'm just recapping what i said last episode but it <laughs> it sucks but like come on guys that's not an excuse no. oh you know, we got screwed on this drive let's go back we got screwed on that drive let's go back like let's then let's keep going and they didn't they got out of their heads and it was a whole thing uh yeah we need to start fast we need to, we need to put our foot on someone's throat uh we we got to slaughter UMass. Um, As I said in the last episode, last year's team did not go undefeated. As much as we enjoyed last year's team, it did not go undefeated. There were two losses. But they answered both those losses with sounding victories the following week. Yeah. Picking themselves back up, going back out and saying, that loss is not going to define us. This team has that ability. There's a lot of guys on this team that were part of that team last year. They might not have been the leaders of that team, but they were part of that team, and they saw how it was led. I want to see those guys that were part of that team last year step up like last year's team did following a loss. I want to come out, answer the bell, show up, you know, being loose and dancing, and and talking smack 
to the opponent is one thing when you're winning. When you have performances like we had last week against Texas A&M, I kind of want to see business. I, I, I want to say stand on business. You know, yeah. if, if you're going to stand on business, be business about it. And go out there, keep your mouth shut this week. Own what happened. Flush it down the toilet. Never watch that tape again. And go play Mizzou football that earned a top 10 ranking coming into the season. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah, I would love to see the kind of stuff where we just we are running down their throat and handing the ball to the ref every single time, you know? No, none of the first down, no bow and arrow, nothing like that. Just jam it down their throat, run through someone, give the ball back to the ref every single time. And I, I know we're harping things we want to see offensively. Defense has a lot to show for. Um, yeah. I know you weren't as hard on defense following the Vanderbilt game as what I was. Uh, there were question marks I saw there that, you know, over pursuits, bad angles, guys just losing where they're at on the field and where they're supposed to be. And boy, did it show up this past week against A&M. You want to, we're in October, second game in October coming up. You got to get that crap off film. Mm -hmm. There's no more excuses, no more first year coordinator learning his scheme, whatever. I'm sorry. His scheme seems to be stand back and wait. Watch and wait. Absolutely. Uh, let's light we were, some we hair were, on fire. Yeah. I, I feel like we were kind of sold a bill that was, um, he was going to be a lot of uh, havoc plays similar to what Baker ran. Uh, and I was very excited for that. I think I, you can go back. I even mentioned that. It's what we need. It's how we were effective last year. And I haven't seen that at all. Uh, and I know in what I, against Buffalo and against, uh, whoever FCS team he played, Murray State. Murray State. Um, you, you don't want to blitz a lot because you shouldn't have to. Okay, that's fine. Boston College, running quarterback. I get it, you know. Vanderbilt, same thing. <laughs> we sh yesterday, yesterday should have been the game where you come hair on fire, you come havoc, you come sitting, guys. And I, we didn't see any of it. Now I'm worried. Now I'm worried. I, I, I told myself, you know, I've kind of lied to myself. Maybe this is what he does. Maybe this is just his game plan. And that can't that can't be successful. We've we've got to run havoc plays. We've got to get in the backfield. This looks an awful lot. No, it's not as bad as, as the Wilkes defense. That's unfair. I shouldn't say that. Uh, but it's similar. And it just seems like they, they get picked apart because these poor secondary guys are just running for their life, try to keep up with someone when they are got all day for the quarterback to throw. You know, when I when I think of sacks this year, I think Jacobs, uh, linebacker Batum brought with him from South Alabama. Looking at the box score from the A&M game, was he hurt and I missed it? Because he's not even in the box score. Good point. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall Jacobs' name even once. You know, and, and he's well, taken from it. Yeah. He's been a timely blitzer playmaker. Uh, Hicks has had a few sacks here and there doing that, but Jacob seems to be the guy that stands out in that pass rush ability from the linebacker corpse. But, you know, if you sit back against an SEC quarterback and, and don't pressure them, they're going to tear you up. Your your guys on the secondary can only cover for so long. Uh, that's true in, in pros. You know, there's only so many Daryl Revis has ever created on this earth, and so a lot of a lot of guys, they your pass rush or your, your coverage is going to look terrible with zero pass rush, and against UMass, I don't care. I would rather their quarterback run 200 yards against us and us trying to attack him than to sit back and let him throw for three, 400 yards against us because we're scared to rush him because of his legs. Yeah. I, 
that at this level, we should be able to test heat out. We should be able to bring heat as much as we want and be able to get home. You know, I mean, no offense to UMass, but just for SEC versus, are they a MAC team yet? I know they're going to the MAC. We should be able to get enough pressure where that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, who knows? What do I know? I mean, they've, they got manhandled last week. Well, I don't know about you, but if, if we get manhandled this week, Cole will be doing the podcast by himself for punishment for missing the last three. Yep, that be is. That's that's a that's a great punishment, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, three keys to the game. Things you're looking for. Uh, I think we're both touching on this here, so I'll go ahead and say it. Pass rush. You've got to put that quarterback in the dirt. Um, no reason. Anything below four sacks this week will be unsatisfactory for me unless they just turn around hand the ball off to their running back every time and make it physically or literally impossible to get four sacks in the game because they don't pass four times that's a good one uh some side of the ball and i will just say uh, i want to see good decision making from brady you know it should be there the guys will be open let's sling the box sling the rock around a little bit and let's build some confidence in them Number two for me, no Luke Bauer. Played a pretty good game Saturday against Texas A&M. Five punts, 28 yards. He, he almost had more more punt yards than what the whole offense had. Mm-hmm. I do not want to see Luke Bauer unless – is he the holder for Blake Craig and on field goals? I, I think, think he is. Uh, yeah. That's the only time I want to see him out there when he's taking a knee, what, five yards behind the center? Uh, so, no Luke Bauer, key number two for me. No Luke Bauer, I like that one. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's see um the complete game on defense. You know, no busted coverages, no, you know, loose seventy five yard runs. This is the team to do it. Get right, get right defense. Keep everything you know locked down. Complete game. Number three for me is leadership. I want to see who's going to rise up out of that game last Saturday against Texas A&M and, and, you know, coming back with your tails absolutely tucked between your legs. Who's going to put the work in this week? Come out Saturday and be the leader of the 2024 Mizzou Tigers and say that game does not define who we are and where we're going. Absolutely. Man, my final one is beat the hell out of UMass. Don't let this be a game. Don't let them stick around. Get there. Put your foot in the throat. Beat the hell out of them. And let's let's get some confidence going. Let's get some rhythm. Let's get confidence going. Absolutely. And talking about confidence, I don't know about you, but when I wear five, seven, three T's, I feel confident. Our guest segment and official apparel sponsor is 573tees.com. Go check out all of their designs at 573tees.com or swing by their new store at 8 Hit Street in downtown Columbia. 573tees is local and you can see their passion in their designs. So for all your apparel needs, remember 573tees.com. All right. Anything else this game we need to talk about? I mean... It's pathetic that we're going into UMass and we're not even positive. Yeah, we don't, we don't have anything positive to say. Just that's how bad that loss Saturday just sucked the energy. Uh, for me personally, I don't know. I can't speak for the whole fan base, but uh, assuming from your text yesterday, I, I think it. If it gave, if there's energy, any energy left in you, it was mad, <laughs> anger. S- Skeeter, that was a performance. The wallpaper on my phone was me and my wife wearing Mizzou clothing uh, at a game, and I got so frustrated looking at the Mizzou logo on my shirt after that game, I changed it to something else. Hey, I get it. 
<laughs> I, I was it. so mad. I was furious. No. Uh, you know, I'm look. I, I really am looking forward to Tuesday, and Drinkwitz having this press conference. We'll release this probably Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. So uh, that part won't be included in there as far as what we learned from it. But I want to hear what he's got to say uh, after he goes back and watches film. I want to hear the players that get in front of the mic. And what do they have to say? I want to see if maybe they show a little bit of that respect to Texas A&M, what they were able to do to us, because they did whatever they wanted to do to us. That wasn't us not not playing our game. That was Texas A&M just manhandling, manhandling us. Uh, yeah. So do, do we see that and do we eat it, own up to it, and move on? I'll feel a lot better about the team going forward if we do. If we come out with excuses and say, uh, that was, we didn't play our game. We didn't do this. We didn't do that. And just, you know, me, 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 me. I'm not, not going to feel confident going forward with where we're at mentally. Uh, because if you can't take that 41 to 10 loss, I know we're spending just much time still talking Texas A&M as we are UMass on a UMass preview episode. But if you can't take that 41 10 loss and, you know, let it absolutely make you sick and motivate you to never feel that feeling again as a team and as a player. We're fans. All we can do is cheer and donate to NIL so you can live a much better lifestyle than most of us. But uh, as far as going out on the field, that's up to you, the player. That's up to Drinkwitz, the coach, Kirby Moore, Batoon, the full staff. It's not up to Case and Skeeter what happens Saturday. So do we get right between the ears? Do we have somebody stand up and say, I'm going to do the work, you follow me? Because Curry Schrader did it last year. Darius Robinson did it. They didn't have to get up in front of the microphone and say all the, the fancy cool stuff and get everybody riled up and tempt a whole other fan base with what they were saying in front of the mic. They led by example. And through their work ethic. Who's going to do that this year? Amen, Skeeter. Amen. So we got to see. That's what, this, that's, what, that's what this team is lacking right now. If you missed our recap episode of Texas A&M, go back and watch it because maybe, just maybe, if Case and Skeeter running team practice this week, there's a quarterback competition. It's open. Yeah. You, you made some great points for it. You really did. You were trying to like talk us out of it. And then I was like, damn, that's actually a pretty good idea. <laughs> so go listen to that. If you, if you haven't listened that way, you know what we're saying. We're not saying bench Brady cook. No, no. If, it's if not. Saturday's the best he's going to play. Or maybe it is. Maybe you should listen to go the year. Out. Then yeah, that's what we will be saying. But uh, if you we know, get that type of Brady cook against UMass, Absolutely, you can bet your bottom dollar. We will be saying bench Brady Cook next week, but uh, that's not what we're saying right now. We're saying he just he got the roses handed to him. He didn't have to do anything to earn it, you know. Yeah. So. Yep. He he was. I'm not going there. Not going there. Okay. About your tongue. (laughs) What what you got, Case? I don't know. I don't know enough about you, Mass. All I can do is look up ESPN stats, and it just tells me they're bad. Yeah, I mean, they lost to Buffalo by a lot. We beat Buffalo by thirty-eight. Uh, this is such a weird. This is such a hard game to preview. Are we gonna like? I'm not even gonna. I don't want to put the bets on this game. They cover it. I don't know. I don't have faith in that. I'm not putting money on it. I did. <laughs> I did finally like. I saw like you know we were dogs by a little bit last week. Put a site. Put a like, nice little bet on Zoo money line last week and just threw money into a fireplace. Basically, they. Uh, I'm just reading. I know this is riveting podcast. Yeah, this is our worst content movie right here. Probably. 
but I, I, I'm Googling UMass Fun Facts. They're the number one school for hockey, according to them. This is their own website. They are good. No, they're really good at hockey. Like they're yeah. a good hockey program. Uh, their library is the tallest research library of any college campus in the country. 28 stories tall library at UMass there. Uh, I believe it's second largest in the world. Uh, your entire application is considered when you apply. <sighs> the class of 2022 <laughs> is the most diverse class yet. That's, that's <laughs> just good. reading the admissions website. <laughs> that's that's good. I, you know, they're, they're, finally diverse. they're finally diverse. They're finally they're diverse. Finally in the two thousands. <laughs> but uh, I mean, hell, I don't want to leave Saturday knowing anything about UMass other than what I know now. They suck at football. Were who we thought we were. Two weeks ago, not who we're worried we might be after this past week. That's what I want coming out of Saturday. So uh, we're going to wrap this up with some outdoor talk real quick. But before we do, let's talk about our outdoor sponsor. Our official outdoor segment sponsor is Rack Daddy Minerals. Operated right here in Columbia, Missouri, they have what the deer crave. From their variety of scents to their proven minerals, Rack Daddy Minerals has what you need to help your harvest potential. Go to their website at rackdaddyminerals.com and enter in code MIZ-10 to get 10% off your small mineral bag orders. When it comes to your deer herd needs, remember Rack Daddy Minerals. Give them what they want. Man, I, I appreciate Cole every time we play that commercial. Show him going out through his high fence and sending us pictures of or video of his bucks that he's been growing with rack daddy minerals and then he'll he'll do his grip and grin later in the year with them <laughs> you know but no uh looking at them and knowing what's coming you know we're in october now uh it's, it's time to start thinking deer hunting and thinking a little bit more serious about it cold front coming in gonna drop the temperatures down this week they'll heat back up later in the week but then it looks like another front hitting over the weekend. So uh, I, I have noticed this week, I mean, for the last month, I've been looking for deer and could not find deer driving. This last week, I started seeing a lot right there at the dusk hour, uh, being in people's yards and on the side of the roads and whatnot. So they're starting to be more active as they're gearing up for rut. Um, what are you seeing up your way? Oh, absolutely. I've been doing a lot of scouting lately, uh, on those drive homes at night, just checking spots around back where the farm is. And I am seeing a ton of activity, uh, yeah, around that, uh, hour, hour and a half before dusk. I mean, I'll be honest. I've, I've, I've drove home, uh, actually at, at nighttime, uh, every day last week for something, and every time coming through here, I I probably saw a doe or two in the road come up to my house. So I'm seeing a lot of movement through there. Uh, I didn't personally see this one, but I uh, a neighbor over uh, my hometown where my farm's at, a uh, big eight point, just walking across the. So it's, his, he's got ten acres, but the the deer was probably within, I don't know, two hundred yards of his back door, his back deck, and he's kind of crossed uh crossed through there. So I mean, I, I being honest, I've seen a lot more movement this year with the temperatures up than I did last year. No, I'm not a deer scientist. We have them on, and they'll, they'll they could tell me a real reason for this, but uh, coincidental or what? That's just something I've noticed anecdotally that I haven't seen a lot of movement uh, right now. So yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm I'm excited to uh, pull some cameras I I put out recently and. And see just who's on the property for what times if they've started daylight at all i think for me right now we're we're getting into not quite severe stage but getting close to severe stage of drought around here and so i think i'm gonna be looking for water when i'm going out and scouting uh deer have to have something to drink and <clears throat> The acorns from 
what I saw on my my trip out last week are not very promising for the area that I hunt right now. And I know that's it it sounds contradicting to me because we had Daniel on a couple of weeks ago from Growing Deer TV and he talked about how it's, you know, a humdinger harvest on acorns around their place. So uh to be such a maybe maybe I'm just looking in the absolute wrong area. I don't know, but um there is a pond and I think I'm gonna try to find the best ways there uh with wind and what I'm learning with thermals and everything of best area to set up close to that pond <clears throat> because in a large section of national forest it's <clears throat> about the only source of water available right now so there's got to be some deer traffic going around it yeah that's interesting i mean we are hitting some pretty bad drought levels here as well uh it's affecting the foundation of my house actually but um i hunt a, a creek bed they're not a creek i hunt about 75 yards off a creek bed consistently it's my favorite spot to to find deer crossing on my property uh, and, I, and I wonder if that is gonna if that is gonna give me a little more action than than I had seen. I mean, I, I it's honestly pretty good though. Even in non drought years, they the deer yeah. seem. That's why I hunt there. Obviously, though, you wouldn't go somewhere you're not seeing deer. Uh, but I wonder if that does do a little more. But I, that's that's been a, my key is for even with turkey is just water sources. Yeah, they've they've got to come. They've got to drink water. You said they got to drink water sometime. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a pretty good pinch point if there's water. All right. Well, uh, Cole, or them excuses are getting deep now. So next time, you know, we're, we're going to have to have you on here so you can you can fill in the rest of the hour here. It, it's your time that we had set aside for you to to talk about your successful hunt already. Uh, he's he's got one down, and uh, knowing him. Probably not processed yet, but will be worked on this week, I'd imagine. He, he likes to let them hang about a week or so, I think, before he actually goes to cutting them up. So, Where is he hanging it? That I'm not sure. Has he got a cooler? I think it's at his dad's place. His dad does. Is with his dad. You know, I lost a doe last year because we had a random 65, 75 degree day when I was trying to hang it. It was about like this. I hung a I hung a doe. It was cold. It was cool, and uh, my fault. But it got way harder than I expected the next day. I was at work. I was gonna get it out early, and go cut it up. And I was like, well, this this meat's probably gone. So, coyotes have to eat too. Coyotes. That's exactly what my father in law said. He's like, well, you're just feeding the coyotes now. So he's like, someone's gonna get it. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's. it's... It's something you hate having to do. Yeah, I was not. I, I was very, very upset about this whole situation. But it's, but yeah. it's part of the process. Sometimes I lost two out of the three deer I I harvested last year. I did not. Yeah, but eat one, my dog ate, and <laughs> that's the such other a weird deep freeze. Uh, yeah, that's right. Cycled yeah, deep the hot go out. And cooked it in the deep freeze. So, uh, you have. You have that sometimes, and you just have to take the bad with the good, you know. And just like our tigers, we take the bad with the good. We're still, you're still wearing the Mizzou hat today. Uh, you still have the man cave Mizzou banner hanging up behind you there. I don't know if you got the the back wallpaper changed back on your phone to. <laughs> you and the wife with the Mizzou gear if you're back to Royals gear right now, but uh hey, do do need to give a shout out to the Kansas City Royals for not only making the playoffs, but making it to through the wild card round. Uh and the American League Central, complete opposite of the National League Central where my Cardinals like to reside, but they did not make anybody out of the wild card round from the NL Central. And you all have three of the four teams in the AL Central 
are left for the AL side of the playoff bracket. So, uh, you know, get get behind them there, Mizzou's baseball team in postseason. Uh, I'm watching them. I'm not going to celebrate the wins. I don't feel that's fair to you, but uh, definitely pulling for y'all to have some success and make a deep October run. So uh, as far as that, go Saints, Monday night football. (laughs) (laughs) I guess this will be released after the game, so we'll know what the outcome of that. Yeah, one of us will not be smiling when we talk about that game when Uh we get to this part of the podcast when we listen later in the week. So do you have anything else you want to add for this week's episode or preview episode? Let's go let's go beat UMass, beat them up, and let's try and get some confidence back, boys. Get some confidence back for the fans too. We need a little something. We're a little low on morale around here if you couldn't tell. Yeah, because after this it's homecoming and homecoming at the place that originated that should be celebrated, not something that I'm I'm glad the UMass games this week, not Auburn. Yeah. <laughs> because if you would have followed Auburn with that game. Yep. Oof, oof, yep. oof so, indeed. Oof indeed. Regroup. Like the Phoenix, rise from the ashes, beat the piss out of the Minutemen, and come back to Como and celebrate homecoming. So everybody stay safe. Have a great week. As always, M I Z. Z O U. So